The surveillance footage is remarkable in its banality. It shows Stephen Paddock, the Las Vegas gunman, in the days before his mass shooting. He cuts a lonesome figure as he moves through the Mandalay Bay Hotel, playing video poker for hours in the casino, buying snacks at a newsstand, watching a LeBron James interview in a restaurant, and at times chatting with hotel staff. But this picture of an ordinary gambler disguises a far more sinister intent. Through this previously unseen footage, we'll show how Paddock methodically planned his attack and how, over seven days, hotel staff unwittingly helped him to move bag after bag of weapons to his room. The videos, obtained exclusively by the New York Times from MGM Resorts, begin on Monday, September 25th. At the VIP counter, he checks into a suite on the 32nd floor and books an adjoining room, which he will check into four days later. He doesn't immediately bring in suitcases. Instead, he spends two hours in the hotel, going to his room and eating at a sushi restaurant downstairs. Just before 5 p.m., he drives his Chrysler Pacifica minivan to the valet area, where a bellman loads the luggage cart with five suitcases. Paddock asks to stay with his luggage, so the bellman brings him through the service elevators to his room, something hotel management say is not unusual. Paddock spends the next four hours in his room, and at 9.40 that night, he leaves the hotel, bringing two suitcases with him. He drives one hour to Mesquite, where he lived. Cell phone records show that he stays the night and spends most of Tuesday here. Around 8 p.m., Paddock returns to Las Vegas, but he stops at the Ogden, a downtown condominium complex. This is interesting for a few reasons. Paddock was also renting rooms here for the entire week. He checked in the previous Friday when a music event called the Life is Beautiful Festival was being held in the surrounding streets. Internet records recovered by the police show that he searched for that festival's lineup and its expected attendance. This was similar to his research of the Mandalay and the Route 91 Harvest Festival, which he would later attack. So, the Ogden and the Life is Beautiful Festival could have been used for planning or may even have been a target. Later Tuesday night, Paddock returns to the Mandalay and a different bellman helps him to move seven more suitcases to his suite. Again, he uses the service elevator. He tips the bellman, who had no way of knowing these cases were packed with guns and ammunition. He gambles for eight hours until morning. Paddock was a regular at the Mandalay and several casino hosts knew him. The videos show their interactions as being completely normal and in no way alarming. Remember, in two days, Paddock has brought 12 cases upstairs. He spends most of Wednesday in his room and that evening repeats a similar pattern. He leaves the Mandalay, again carrying two suitcases. He stops at the Ogden and drives home to Mesquite. On Thursday, he buys a 308 bolt action rifle from a gun store and visits a nearby gun range before driving back to the Mandalay. That night, he again uses the valet service and a bellman to carry a white container and three suitcases to his room. His arsenal of weapons is growing. Again, he gambles through the night. It's now Friday, and at 8 p.m., the Route 91 Harvest Festival will open in the fairgrounds across from the Mandalay. Paddock stays in his room until around 3 p.m., and uses his laptop while the suite is cleaned. He checks into the adjoining room, 134, using the name of his girlfriend, Mary Lou Danley. He also tells cleaning staff to leave behind the food service cart. Two days later, Paddock would use this and one other service cart to create a surveillance ring during his attack. Overnight, he makes a brief trip to Mesquite, arriving back at the Mandalay at 6 a.m. with two more suitcases. Soon after noon on Saturday, he places do not disturb signs on both room doors. He declines housekeeping, he takes an elevator to the valet area and sits waiting for his car. He carries two more bags to his room. He gambles some more and that night he makes a final trip to Mesquite, returning to the Mandalay at 3am on Sunday morning. He gambles through the night in the high limit slot area 
and returns to his room at 7.37 a.m. It's 12.16 p.m. when we see Paddock going back to the parking garage. The guests exiting the elevator have no idea that in 10 hours, this unremarkable figure would commit the worst mass shooting in modern American history. He returns from his car, bringing two suitcases and a smaller bag inside. Since Monday, he has brought at least 21 cases, two smaller bags, a laptop bag and a container to his room. This is the last time we see Paddock, arriving at the 32nd floor. Through the day, he opens, closes and locks both rooms repeatedly. At 36 minutes after 9, he locks the deadbolt to room 135 for the last time. Four minutes later, Jason Aldean, who is headlining the Route 91 festival, begins his act. Paddock then turns the deadbolt to room 134. At 10.05, his shooting rampage begins. In under 10 minutes, he would kill 58 people and injure over 700 before taking his own life. He had amassed 23 guns and thousands of rounds of ammunition. Almost six months since the attack, Paddock's motive remains unknown. <laughs> 